Hello and welcome. I'm Barbara O'Neill and today we're going to uncover some surprising truths about water that you might not know. If you're over 40, staying healthy and hydrated is more crucial than ever. We'll dive into why water is vital for our bodies, its essential functions, how much you should really be drinking each day, and some practical tips to easily stay hydrated. Did you know that 70% of people make huge mistakes with hydration? You don't want to be one of them. Plus, stick around until the end. We have an amazing surprise that will make this journey even more worthwhile. Dr. Barbara O'Neill will address a deeper issue affecting many people. The body's inability to absorb water efficiently, often due to a lack of essential minerals or cellular imbalance. Drinking enough water is crucial for staying hydrated, supporting digestion, and maintaining proper muscle and joint function. Water also helps regulate body temperature and flushes out toxins through sweat and urine. Without adequate water, we may experience dehydration symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, and dizziness. Long-term dehydration can lead to more serious issues like kidney stones and urinary tract infections. To get the most out of hydration, Dr. Barbara O'Neill suggests drinking water throughout the day rather than all at once. Start with a glass of water in the morning, keep a bottle nearby, and listen to your body's signals. Staying hydrated is a simple yet essential step for overall health and well-being. Do we need to drink water? The million dollar question. Why do we need to drink water? Well, let me give you a few pieces of information that will help you understand why we do need to drink water and why it must be water, not juice, not cordial, not soda drinks, not tea, not coffee, but water. We urinate out, we're gonna say a quart loss every day. So we urinate out, out of our kidneys, we urinate out 1.5 quart loss out of our skin, and most people are surprised at this, we lose 0.5 of a quart loss. Out of our colon, we lose 0.3 of a quart loss. This is in 24 hour period. Out of our lungs, we lose 0.2 of a quart loss. So considering in a day, that is 2.5 quart loss. We need to be drinking at least eight glasses of water a day. That's four glasses per quart. That takes us to two quarts a day when we have eight glasses of water a day. What about the other 0.5? Well, that's coming in in our fruits, in our vegetables, maybe herb teas, maybe a vegetable juice through the day. And that that quart is important. That eight glasses of water a day is important because every single body functions requires water. And water and water alone will do it. We had a pathologist do our program. He said, you'll find this interesting, Barbara. We did studies on caffeine. And we discovered that it takes, from one cup of coffee, it takes five glasses of water to make up for the dehydrating agents in a cup of coffee. Wow, that quite surprised me. But when you consider that, I think most Americans, most Australians are dehydrated. So I always ask a person, how much water do you drink a day? These are some of the answers I get. Ah, uh, not enough. Ah, uh, not much. Ah, uh, I don't drink water or my legs swell. Ah, uh, I don't drink water because I'm visiting the bathroom too much. Those last two answers tell me that the water's not getting inside the cell. What he found was the first place that water is lost is the stomach. Because lining our stomach, we have a thick mucosa lining and in that thick mucosa lining is sodium bicarbonate. And that sodium bicarbonate is in the stomach lining so that if any stomach acid tries to go through, it's immediately negated or neutralized so that the, the hydrochloric acid doesn't eat out our stomach. But one of the first places that water is taken from in dehydration is the lining of the stomach. And so when someone is dehydrated, they can have a very thin stomach lining 
And when there's a very thin stomach lining, there's no sodium bicarbonate in there. And so the stomach acid can easily start to eat its way through. And then because there's damage, our body's own microorganisms change roles and become the cleanup team. Remember Monday, where we looked at the cycle of life? And they, they change roles and become the cleanup team. Remember what its name is? Bacteria. And they've given them a name in the stomach. It's called Helicobacter. You've heard of it? Yes. Helicobacter pylora. Helicobacter pylora is blamed for stomach ulcers. Students, what's the cause of stomach ulcers? Well, the number one. It's actually dehydration. And Dr. B claimed that at the writing of his book to have cured 3,000 cases of stomach ulcer with water alone. Because the first, the first place that the water is taken from is the lining of the stomach. And the first place it goes to is the lining of the stomach. So a glass of water half an hour before the meal, the first thing it'll do is it'll thicken that mucosal lining on the stomach. So there's a couple of doctors from Australia, Western Australia, that got a Nobel Prize for discovering that Helicobacter pylora causes stomach ulcers. They were even putting Helicobacter pylori into someone's stomach and, yeah, stomach ulcer. But you know what my question is? Well, were they dehydrated? How much water were they drinking? Uh, <laughs> are they coffee drinkers? We had a pathologist attend our program. He said, we did studies on coffee and we found it took five glasses of water to make up for the dehydrating agents in one cup of coffee. Now, when you look at that, I think you'd agree with me, the nation's dehydrated. And Dr. B's book, One of the Body's Many Cries for Water, it actually ex explains why all of these ailments are happening. The other title to his book is, He's Not Sick, He's Thirsty. The other title to his book is, don't, or subtitle, Don't Treat Thirst with Medications. <laughs> Because when you do take medications, what does that do to your hydration status? Lessens it even more. I know as a psychiatric nurse, you'd, you know, you'd be talking to the patients and you can tell their mouth is dry by the way they're talking. So what do they do? Oh, Coke, <laughs> coffee. Eh, is that helping? Not at all. In fact, it's contributing to the fact that they're still in the psychiatric hospital because our brain is 85% water. From the neck down, we're 75% water. Our brain is a hydroelectric system. No hydro, no electricity. A person can actually develop negative thought patterns in a dehydrated brain. And most people know that their headache possibly is due to dehydration. My husband rang me one day, three o'clock in the afternoon, he was driving. He said, I don't know what's the matter with me. I've got a migraine. I can hardly drive. So you know what my first question always is? How much water have you drank? And he went, oh dear. He said, I haven't drank any water since I woke up this morning. So he woke up in the morning and had water. He had breakfast, must have got busy, 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 had lunch, and now we are three in the afternoon. He is chronically dehydrated. So I said to him, please don't drink a whole glass of water. Please just have half a glass of water. A few minutes later, another half glass of water. A few minutes later, let, let, let it little by little by little go in. He said after the first glass, the migraine went to a headache. And after the second glass, the headache went to a dull ache. And after the third glass, he had no headache. Now, isn't it nice if, the, if you can resolve every headache just with water? But unfortunately, not every headache is just due to dehydration.